Hello everyone, this is Dragonfly, back with another mission build in the DCS World Mission Editor. We've come up with another concept for our mission scenario that I'd like to build today. It's uh, mission four here uh, on the mission briefing. And this is the scenario. Today's air tasking order requires our unit to provide airborne on-call close air support. Unfortunately, the local populace requires the use of the highways surrounding the FARP, which will require vertical takeoffs for the time being. So that's going to reduce our fuel load and the amount of weapons we can take. We'll have to keep our uh, takeoff weight below 20,500 pounds. Accomplish a VTO, proceed to the air refueling track, take on a full fuel load, and then proceed to the orbit area over Sanaki, channel 31 at 12,000 feet. Contact Warhorse the TACC on 264.0 on uh, COM2 for mission tasking. Alrighty, let's get back to the uh, mission editor and I'll show you what I've done to build this mission. This mission is going to be using the DCS World uh, JTAC, so I'll show you how to do that today. It'll be the primary thing that we'll be doing today. So let's take a look at the triggers. And the triggers I use for this mission are these five here, these five in green. Originally, I was going to use a scripted uh, JTAC because I actually prefer those. But I think for this mission, the DCS World uh, JTAC will work uh, well. So the first trigger that we are using is the one that actually starts the mission that we've used before uh, using the uh, COM2 radio frequency to start the mission. So the condition uh, that we're using is cockpit parameter equal to parameter com2 underscore freak value 264. When you put ch channel 264 into the um, com2 radio, a flag will come on, number 264, audio cue, uh, Dragon uh, Fly Warhorse I'll copy. It will send a message, text message. Dragonfly Warhorse, no current tasking remain on station for assigned duration. And then it will activate two groups. And I'll show you those groups right after this. It will activate a, a group called Red Artie, which is uh, two artillery pieces. And it'll activate a group called Red Artillery Support, which is just some uh, refueling vehicles that I have put in. So let me just show you the target area. So up here, I put uh, two artillery pieces. And as I said, I named them Red Artillery. Category artillery type, I put in two MISTAs. There's uh, are, uh, pretty big artillery pieces. And uh, I made them late activation so they won't come on until we actually go to uh, channel 264. The only advanced waypoint I used down here was perform task, fire at point. And actually put a condition in on that is user flag 233 on. And I'll, 233 is in our, in our next trigger. I'll show you what that is. That's basically when you contact the JTAC. But for the task fire at point, when you put that in, it generates a uh, target uh, triangle. I'll show you that down here. That you can pull around to wherever you want it to go. Let's see here, fire at point. And I can pull that around wherever. Then here in the zone radius, I can change that to uh, whatever I want to encompass the target area. You obviously, the smaller, the more accurate the artillery fire is going to be. So if you want a widespread, you can you could put it up to 
I don't know, a thousand. And you can see it expands the circle. I like 250 on this mission as it, it encompasses all the targets. I'll move it down a little bit more to make sure we get them all. Okay, so that's the red artillery. Um, I also put in a few uh, just refueling vehicles in, a, in another group called Red Artillery Support, and I just put like four of them in there. So there's just kind of the trucks. And then uh, for later on, I also put in uh, a, uh, some additional um, air defense added SAMs that you can put in if you want to make the mission more challenging and we'll activate those by radio menu and uh, I did that because that way uh, I was going to show how to use um, a loft bomb technique uh, so that's what I did on I just added a, a, a few more SAMs um, And let's see. Let's go back to the. So we talked about how to activate the mission using 264. Okay, the uh, 45 seconds after we talked about that one. Now, when we contact the JTAC, contact him on COM1, so it's COM1 underscore freak using the same condition x colon cockpit parameter equal to the value of the frequency will be 233.0 we'll turn on a flag 233 uh, audio cue and then the message that it's going to send is dragonfly whiplash target coordinates are as follows and the reason i did that is uh it, it, it it'll it, it'll give you a chance to write down the coordinates and build a waypoint, whatever you want to do with those coordinates. Um, now, coordinates in DCS, um, I advise on the overall uh, options page under the settings that you go to precise navigation on uh, the uh, tick menu in the, uh, in the settings. And that way, when when you put your cursor over an item it'll show the lat long down here at the bottom and all you have to do is uh, round it off and I'll show you that for the uh, latitude you round off to six digits and for the longitude you know, it's all longitude will always start with a zero or a one. You uh, will round it off to seven digits, and it'll also tell you the elevation. Okay, so that's how you figure out the coordinates. You just put your cursor there and write them down, and then put them in into the message. Okay, request immediate support when ready. Recontact me on two thirty four point zero, com one for further instructions. And I put a little note in here because this is where we go from our, our trigger scripting into the DCS scripting. So we'll be using the DCS JTAC com, mission, com menu after that. When we go to 234, it'll uh, generate that uh, uh, JTAC. I'll show you here. That actually it'll already show on the menu, but it, it'll, uh, it'll start their scripting. So let's talk about the JTAC just a little bit. As I said, I'm going to use a, 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 a DCS world JTAC. The, the communications on it's uh, sometimes a little tedious, but uh, it's, it is more realistic. So I sat down a uh, armor piece here, a Scout H Humvee, made his skill excellent, called him Artillery JTAC, the unit name Artillery JTAC, pointed in there toward the south. Did put in one waypoint, just waypoint one. So basically he'll, uh, when he's activated, 
I did put him as late activation. He'll drive down here to point one and then start doing his JTAC duties. But under waypoint one, under the, the uh, point zero, um, EPL, EPLRS is a uh, DCS scripting that's in there that basically is the navigation system that they use for de for uh, determining targets and, and all that. So that you want to make sure to leave that in there. And then I added uh, a few more advanced waypoints. First one I added was a set option, rules of engagement to weapons hold. And the reason I set it to weapons hold is because if you don't, he'll start this uh, MV will start firing on these uh, targets, and uh, you don't want him to do that. You want to kill him, not let, you want to let him do it. But and the third advanced waypoint in, I was perform command to make him invisible so the enemy can't see him. That way they won't shoot at him. And to make sure, I also put a fourth command in there, perform command immortal, to make him immortal. So if they do start shooting at him, it won't do any good. Okay, well then he drives to point one, and at point one he starts doing his FAC assigning duties under advanced waypoints under perform task. I use the uh, action fac assign group okay and what that does is it says is makes the lead unit of which in this case is only one uh, makes him a fac to assign targets okay now for the first advanced waypoint i want him to assign yep let's get that back The red artillery. That's his highest priority. If you you know if you don't do this, you might get him. He may wind up assigning a truck or something else. Which you really you, what you're after is the uh, artillery pieces that are firing on the uh, UN checkpoint. Okay. So I want him. The assigned group is the red artery. Artie. I went ahead and said whatever weapon he wants to designate. He'll look at your your weapons and decide what he wants. Designation. You can have different designations. If you want smoke, you can have uh, white phosphorus, which is WP, Willie Pete, slash, or uh, dash laser. If you just want the laser, if you just want an IR pointer, if you just want smoke, or if you want auto, I uh, did it uh, as just designating with the laser, no uh, no smoke. Call sign, a variety of call signs that you can put in. I used whiplash. Now this number is the priority of the targets that you want this group to be, and I want red artillery to be priority one. Frequency is the frequency that you're contacting the JTAC on, which in our case, as, uh, as I showed you in the message, will be 234. And I did that for the other two groups, too. Uh, for If the added SAMs are put in, I'll make, I made them the second priority. And, uh, if the, uh, and the red artillery support is his last priority, uh, the third priority for him to assign as a target. Okay, I don't think I did show you though that I did put in a UN checkpoint down there, and that, oh, it was um, it was just about six or seven trucks at this bridge, and that's what the artillery will be firing at. Okay, so let's see. I think we finished that one. Yep, so he'll contact on 234, and then that gets into the DCS scripting, and you just kind of follow the radio commands of the uh, the JTAC, which there are several when you're actually flying the mission, uh, to, in order to get him to laze for you if that's what you want him to do. 
And if you don't want to use them at all, uh, that's why I put the coordinates in there because you can essentially just go ahead and uh, build yourself a waypoint using a targeting pod and do your own lasing and your own uh, uh, targeting. Okay, so the fourth trigger is just this, a mission success trigger. Mission four success, set flag 504. If you killed those two artillery pieces, group dead, red artillery, red arty, then it'll turn on flag 504, make a sound, a little liver. Shaq, nice job. And uh, send a text message, dragonfly, whiplash, all artillery out of action. Appreciate the help. Okay. And then the last one is just a uh, after a successful mission, the JTAC releasing, or not the JTAC, the uh, TACC releasing you to return to base. Dragonfly Warhorse, that's a nice day's work. No more tasking cleared to return to base. Then over in the defined mission goals for mission four, the label I have on here is artillery destroyed. Mission four, artillery destroyed. It's 100% mission effective. If you do that, it is an offline mission. And the condition for that mission goal is if the uh, group already is dead, which you could put it in there that way, uh, but uh, I I'll also set a flag. Flag is true, 504. Okay. Okay, let's go back to the triggers. The JTAC that we put down was a late eight activation uh, unit. So we need to activate that unit. And the best place to do it is when the mission starts. So in the first trigger, when we set the radio to frequency 264, I mentioned it activates the red artillery and the red artillery support. It also, we group activate the artillery JTAC. And what that does is it activates that unit, but it also puts, uh, takes a couple seconds for it to happen. But in the DCS scripting, it will put a uh, F9 radio menu in the DCS communication menu, which is for the JTAC and all the scripting that's involved uh, for the uh, JTAC. Okay, the last two triggers I'll talk about real quick is uh, we did add more SAMs uh, or the option to put more SAMs into the mission. And what I did is I put that, um, put that in as a radio item in the DCS communication menu also. Uh, so at mission start, we're going to add a radio item for more SAMs. I remember that's just a label. There is no condition. This is just going to happen at mission start. The action is going to be radio item add for the coalition, for the blue co coalition. Radio item add for coalition. And the name, this is the title that you're going to see on the F10 menu in, in when you're flying the mission. Add more SAMs. The flag, and we've already used flag one. We use flag one to add the, the uh, random SAMs in it, uh, that I showed you in uh, video two. So this one, it's just going to say add more SAMs. Flag, if flag two, the value, you can just leave it one. Okay. So again, just a label, activate additional SAMs. If flag two is true, that's what this radio item will turn on is flag two, then it will activate the added SAM group that we put in around the artillery there. It will also give a sound cue for dragon dragonfly whiplash copy five by five dragonfly whiplash copy five by five and a text message that says dragonfly whiplash 
eyes on Ashoka, Manpad, Strela, and OSA SA8. Not going to be a cakewalk because those were the uh, SAMs that we added in the immediate area of the artillery. I also added an SA2, but the uh, JTAC wouldn't be able to see that. Okay. And that pretty much completes all the uh, triggers for this particular mission. Uh, I think this will be another fun one to fly and looking forward to flying it and hope you'll join me for that. In the meantime, y'all have a great day and we'll talk to you next time. Dragonfly out.